These are the Lem's Primal Pursuit mid-waterproof hiking boot, and after putting them through the ringer on some difficult hikes, we're ready to tell you what we think about them. Lem's has a lot of awesome hiking boot options, so we're here to let you know how the Primal Pursuit's tread, waterproofing, comfort, and overall performance stack up. Welcome everybody to the Sons of Seaver YouTube channel where there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad gear. We're super excited to talk to you today about the Lem's Primal Pursuit Mid Waterproof Hiking Boot. This is a shoe that we've had for quite some time now and with the weather cooling off we've finally been able to take it on some awesome hikes and we're ready to give you our thoughts about it. First things first, we want to jump into the specs so that you know exactly what you're getting when you're looking at this shoe. If this isn't something you're interested in, go ahead and look at the timestamps in the description and you can jump ahead to different parts of the video. Uh, after we do the specs, I'll send it over to Chris so that he can talk about his likes. He'll send it back to me so that I can do the same and then we'll go through our dislikes. Okay, so some of the features and specs on these shoes. Uh, there is a waterproof membrane that includes a gusseted tongue inside. The upper is made of suede and air mesh. There are 3.5 millimeter lugs. There's a 4.5 millimeter insole and a 9 millimeter EVA midsole. These are zero drop and uh, they weigh 11.8 ounces for a men's size 10. There are two different color options right now. There's a Juniper and the Mercury Rising, but we did notice on Lem's website that those have been listed as discontinued. So if you're thinking about getting either of these colorways, I would jump on it now because those sizes are not gonna be restocked once they're gone. And with all that out of the way, I'm gonna send it over to Chris so that he can tell you the things that he likes about the shoe. The file talking about my likes of this boot actually got corrupted. So. This is future Chris coming back to revisit my likes of the boot. If I look different than I do in the rest of the video, that's why, sorry if that's distracting, but there is a lot to like about this specific boot, but I wanted to key in on a couple specific things. I took this boot on a hike where I took a similar boot from another company and then I ended up wearing one halfway up and the other halfway up and then each one also split the way down. That gave me some really good perspective on what stands out to me about this boot. I'm not gonna mention what that other boot is. You can go look at some other content on the channel and it may give you a hint as to which boot I'm talking about, but some of the contrast between this boot and that boot is what really makes this thing shine. One is the weight. This guy comes in at 11.8 ounces. The other boot comes in at 13 ounces. I started out in the other boot and then switched to this one, and that weight made a marked difference. If you go and compare the weight of this boot to some other popular boots that are out on the market, ones that are not barefoot minded, then you will notice that this thing is significantly lighter. Depending on the length and the technicality of your trail, that weight may or may not make or break your legs. That's something I've really come to appreciate about this boot, is that it is stupid light. The next light that I want to feature is the materials and how flexible they are overall. Interesting thing, with the insole in here, the stack height on this boot is about 18 millimeters total. The other boot I was working with, with its insole in, has a 12 millimeter stack height. You would think that that would make the other boot significantly more flexible, but I think this is actually overall more flexible. The reason why is because the upper material construction is actually really, really light and thin, yet still maintains that ruggedness that you want in a hiking boot. I'm not worried that if I trip over a rock or a log or a root, that this upper material is going to rip or that my foot is going to be injured underneath the material. At the same time, I can tell that compared to some other boots, the upper material is lighter, it's a little bit thinner as well, and obviously, it's still fantastically waterproof. Mix that in with a decently flexible sole, even with that extra stack height compared to some other companies. And this thing is freaking solid when it comes to weight and flexibility. Now I'm gonna pass things over to Eric, and he's gonna talk to you about what he likes about the boot. For me, there is quite a few things that I like about this shoe. The first one that I'll start off with is the waterproofing. So I found it to work perfectly, as long as you're not letting water come up and over 
the ankle there. I stood, you know, at the top of this waterfall filming for like a half hour, 45 minutes, and my feet stayed perfectly dry while I was standing in that creek. The second thing that I really like about it, I think that the tread does a really good job. So this is the same tread pattern that comes on their Primal Pursuit Hiker. Uh, so that's a zero drop wide toe box trail shoe that they have. I've used it just for hiking and for trail running. And it's got that rubber bottom with those awesome lugs. They continued that on this model and I think that it does a great job. Again, here's some shots of me jumping through the water. I never slipped once and I jumped across the top of that waterfall a couple of times there uh, while I was out getting this footage. So the tread does a really good job. I think that the stack height is pretty solid for a technical hiking boot. So an issue that I have with a lot of barefoot technical hiking boots is they're just too thin. If you're gonna take these things backpacking, if you're gonna take them on really long and really technical heights, then you wanna have that protection under your foot. As somebody who's been running in Vibram five fingers all summer long and I've been wearing barefoot shoes or minimalist shoes for a really long time, I'd say my feet are pretty adjusted to not having a lot between them and the ground. But when you're out on a technical hike, when you've got roots and rocks and a lot of mileage, you want that extra protection and I think this hits a pretty good sweet spot at that 18.5 millimeter stack height. I think that it's comfortable for a pretty long day. So the hike that I took this thing on that's most memorable for me was up uh, Twin Peaks here in the Wasatch Range in Utah. It was an eight and a half mile round trip with over 5,000 feet of elevation gain and you were rock hopping or stepping on loose scree pretty much that entire hike and they held up really well. My feet definitely ached at the end of the day. So I wouldn't want to go any less than that 18.5 millimeter stack height because I think that if I had, my feet would have been even worse off towards the end of that hike. I really like the styling on it. I think it's a cool retro style. Both colorways really appeal to me and I think that they are great for kicking around town. They definitely can't be dressed up like some of Lem's other boots, but I do like that they are suede and air mesh, so that means that the upkeep on them is gonna be easier than the leather hiking boots that Lem's has to offer. And I think one of the strongest points for these is the price. So these come in at $145. And if you're looking at like the Boulder Summit or the Outlander, you're looking at $180, $190. So you're gonna save quite a bit of money and still get really, really good performance out of these boots if you decide to go with them. Okay, so before kicking it back over to Chris so that he can talk about the things that he does not like about the shoe, I wanna mention some of the affiliates that we have going with this channel right now. The first one is, of course, Lems. They just have an amazing lineup. They've got everything that you could need. A big focus for us right now, though, in the fall and winter that's coming up is the boots that they have. So they have quite a few different offerings. This one here is their Outlander boot, and this is just a really, really great hiker. It's got an aggressive tread pattern. It has a wide toe box. It's fully waterproof. It looks amazing. Uh, we really enjoy this one. They also have the Boulder Summit, which is kind of a different take on their popular Boulder boot. Again, really good tread pattern, the same as the Outlander there. This one's fully leather. They also have a canvas version. They just released a black leather version that looks really, really good too, so it's solid black. A lot of people could use that for work. And uh, we've really enjoyed hiking and dressing this one up. Another one that I've enjoyed is their Boulder Boot. Uh, this is the waterproof version of it, so I've used this at work quite a bit. It's nice leather. They're zero drop with wide toe boxes. They just feel great on your feet. This one is not the best hiker, but Lems has just announced that they have an updated version of their Boulder Boot waterproof coming out that has an extra grippy sole on it. So we're super stoked about that. Look for our review of it coming soon. The second we get those things in, we're gonna put them through the ringer and get that video out. So be on the lookout for that. A uh, newer affiliate for us is a sunglass company that we're pretty excited about. It's called Frontline Optics. So this is a really awesome company. We're super excited to be able to partner up with them. Frontline Optics was started by a guy named Mike who's been in the fire and emergency services for over a decade. And obviously sunglasses are super important to frontline workers. And so he set out to make sunglasses with those types of jobs in mind. We talked with them, we were able to get our hands on a few different pairs and we picked up 
the Pomonas, which I think look really, really great and they feel really great. I've really enjoyed just having these around for my everyday pair of sunglasses. They are fantastic. They also sent us a pair called the Alpha that we've used for running. So they give you that full coverage there and they've got this very comfortable uh, rubber piece on the nose and they stay in place for when you're running. And the really cool thing about Frontline Optics, and let me read it to you here so that I don't screw up the name or anything like that, but a portion of all proceeds from the sale of these glasses is donated to the First Responders Children's Foundation in support of those children who have lost a parent in the line of duty. So if you're looking for a great pair of sunglasses and you're looking to do a little bit of good in the world while you're out shopping, please consider Frontline Optics. Uh, it'd be amazing for them to go and get that support. So with our affiliates out of the way, let's send it back over to Chris so that he can talk about his dislikes with the shoe. Talking about the things that I don't love so much about this boot, I've got one thing that's a technical thing that I don't love about this boot, and then I have one thing that's more of a nitpicky thing that I don't like. So let's start with the technical thing first. I'm gonna talk about the traction now. If you look at those teeth up here towards the front, you'll see that they are very prominent and they do a great job on your way up a mountain. Those teeth are gonna dig in and I was on a hike recently where the slope was pretty dramatic. And between the flexibility of the boot and the grip on the front there, I had no issues going up, no worries that I was going to slide backwards or anything like that. The issue is on your way down. And I noticed something recently as I was inspecting these, and it's the up towards the front, obviously all of those teeth are angled backwards so they can dig in as you're going up. On the bottom here of the boot towards the heel, you'll notice that the tread pattern changes to give a little bit more teeth going forward, which is, in theory, a very smart idea because maybe you need to dig in your heels to stop yourself, but I personally am someone who tries to stay on his toes as he comes down a mountain just as much as when he goes up. So the lack of that kind of grip towards the front actually becomes a little bit of a detriment for me specifically. Maybe you're different. Maybe you are one to really dig your heels in as you're going down. But for those of us who are barefoot adapted and we live on the balls of our feet a little bit more, then you know that that's gonna be a little bit harder of a uh, idea to wrap your mind around. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know down in the comments. When you are coming down a mountain on a slope, are you more likely to land with your forefoot or are you more likely to dig in with your heels? For me, definitely more towards the front of the foot. And while I haven't experienced any serious spills, I have experienced some slips that make you throw your arms up and it gets your heart racing a little bit because you think this is it. This is the moment that I roll all the way down to the bottom. The other thing that I don't like about this boot is a little bit of a nitpicky thing. And I think that's okay. And it is the lack of colorways. We only have two colorways that we're working with here, one in the green, and then Eric has the Mercury Rising, which is a much more poppin', vibrant, colored, totally up his alley kind of colorway. I'd love to see black, I'd love to see blue, I would really love to see gray if there's ever a shoe offered in gray. That's the color I'm going to get. I personally love muted colorways when it comes to this kind of stuff, but I know that's just me. I'm grateful that they had something in green. Green is definitely up my alley, and I personally love this colorway. I would just like more options. So when it comes to my dislikes of the boot, there really isn't much to say. I've got two things in mind, and the first one is the gusseted tongue on this one. For whatever reason, I just notice it more than I do on the Boulder Summit or the Outlander. When I put my foot in there, uh, there's these little kind of triangle flap things where the gusset is and I, I couldn't decide if they needed to go up or if they needed to go down on my foot and eventually they've worked themselves out and now I can just slide it in and go but when I first put it on it was like oh I actually notice that the tongue is gusseted and I can feel the material down there for whatever reason. Again that's something that's kind of disappeared as my foot has broken into the boot more and more. 
the second thing is just they're not quite as versatile as the other boots that Lems has to offer. Especially when you take a boot like the Boulder Summit, it's a really clean looking leather boot that you can totally wear out on the trail doing difficult hikes with. And then you could take it to a fancy date or a wedding reception or wear it to church like Chris and I do. So this one, just because of the style that it has, isn't quite as versatile, but I mean, that's not too big of a drawback to be honest. It's a good looking shoe all in all. And so it really just depends on what you're looking for. Okay, so you've heard it all. You know the specs, you know our likes and our dislikes. I'm gonna send it back over to Chris just so that he can wrap the video up. Wrapping up the video for you here, as we do with all of Lem's fantastic hiking options, we highly recommend this boot. I just wanna reiterate, you need to get it while it's hot because this specific version of the boot is being discontinued. If you're looking for a light, flexible and grippy and versatile traditional looking style mid ankle hiking boot then you don't need to go any further go down to the link in the description and go find this thing folks if you liked this video we would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe we would appreciate it also if you would go down to the description and check out all of the fantastic outdoor gear companies that we have chosen to partner with there are a couple other places you can follow along with us in order to get more content. If you want the most up-to-date information on the gear that we are working with and testing, then head over to our Instagram page. There will be a link in the description for that. The other place you can follow closely along with us is Strava, where we post updates on all of our activity and we mention all of the gear that we're using during those activities. If you follow us on Strava, we will follow you back and that way we can start to build and create a more more outdoor minded community. We're glad you're here. We appreciate your view. And as always, we will catch you in the mountains.